Hey guys, what's up? It's Minitough, and welcome back to episode 2 of our ScreenFlow tutorial. In this episode, we're going to be covering video actions and callouts. So I have ScreenFlow open, and I did this really quick recording of something that could be used a video action and a callout for. So we're going to go, and we're going to jump right into this tutorial. So if you're on the right side of the screen, you can see all these little tabs here. And we're going to be covering the video properties and callout properties. So we're going to start with callout properties and if a callout is when it zooms in on your mouse like I'll do it right now I'll click on video properties there there's a callout so let's jump over here and we'll add a callout so let's say you're a lovely person who wants to subscribe to me so I'm gonna zoom in on my mouse subscribing now this is why ScreenFlow is so good because if you're using QuickTime Player it can't really detect your mouse it just detects your whole screen so that's why ScreenFlow is the best screen recording, in my opinion, application. So let's find the part where just about I'm going to click this button. So right about there. And we're going to click the Add Callout. Make sure you're under the Callout tab. So just click Add Callout. And see down here, it tells you how long this is going to last. So if we zoom in using our little zoom feature, we can see just exactly how long that lasts and we don't really want it loading up the whole page so we'll cut it right when I click on it so that's right about there you can see the loading bar on the top so you can just literally just drag this that's how I do it at least drag it and so now you can see this callout is highlighted so if I click off it's not highlighted so let's just click if it's yellow then you're editing it so if I click here I can't edit any callouts because I'm not highlighting one. So if I click here, we can go ahead and edit this callout. So we have all the properties right here. So we can change the opacity of the rest of the background, and it's really annoying. I hate having the opacity up, maybe like a little bit. Then you can change the blur of the actual callout itself, which can be used in later things. I will show you that. So you can change the blur, and you can blur the background, which is... I think it's 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 okay. I don't see a reason why not to. And then you can zoom up, and this will actually zoom the callout closer and closer to your screen, which I think is very helpful. And you can change the border around it with this slider. So just make sure you can see that button nice and good. And you can change the outline, which is this nice big old blue border. And this is how many pixels. So let's just go with two. I think two is a sweet spot. And then we'll change the color. Mm, let's go with a nice nice grayish color to match my background okay that's good and we can sh add some shadowing which it needs a little bit of feathering out there we go using the feather okay so now let's let's check out our video so that's that's pretty good I, I'm happy with that I don't really see the need for all the fancy effects around it but it does it does make it look better so, all right, we go on to this next screen, and now you need to sign in. Let's say you really don't want someone to know your password, but you want them to see your email pretty good. So we're going to zoom in on this whole part of the screen, this nice gray box. So that's when a video property will come in. So down here, there's an Add Video Action button. Now, if you change like the video, let's say you zoom in, this will affect the entire video. So the whole thing will be zoomed in. We don't want that. So we are going to put this back at 100%. So right about, let's see, right about here, we want to zoom in on the screen. So we're going to add a video action. And notice how it's already highlighted. So if I click off, if I mess with something, it's going to mess with the entire screen. So we're going to make sure we have this highlighted. And we're going to change the scale. So what this is saying is, at this point in time, it's going to zoom up. So notice how this is still highlighted. I'm going to position this, and I scroll up. If you could scroll, um, you can zoom in. That's just how I do it. So let's get this nice and filled up the screen. So let's see what we have. Pretty simple. And if you drag this out, this is the tra speed of the transition. So if we do it here, it'll be slower. And if we drag this out more, it will be even slower. So pretty 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 straightforward here. So
So here we have some other options. This is the position if you want to be really technical. So let's say I change this to a 2. It will move the position of the entire screen. So this is um, left and right and this is up and down. And here we have X rotation. So if you mess with that, it's kind of like Star Wars if you have it like this. And if you made it move forward, let's get it back to 0 if I can. That's why typing it in is much easier. And then we have the Y rotation, which is pretty useful if you have two displays up. Like over here, you have some footage of me talking. That would be good for here, except this shouldn't be tilted so much. It would be like here. And the Z rotation, which is kind of like, it's kind of trippy. It's like, whoa. So I don't really like messing with that. And the reflection. So let me zoom out here so I can show you what reflection does. Bam, a reflection. What did you know? And you can change the uh, intensity of the reflection, which I just like to have it very subtle. And you can add a shadow, which you probably can't see. So I'm going to change the color with the color button. You know, see how it, it's very simple. All this fades in together. And you can offset it. So we can put it over here, scroll down some more. And now, okay, let's see. Let's zoom back in because we still have our video transaction highlighted so let's see let's put this back whoop okay so let's watch so far so if you see over here how the um, yellow reflection didn't come in yet that's because it's added during this video action so note if you still have this highlighted don't try to keep adding effects to the video make sure you have the actual video itself selected. So now we can change saturation, brightness, and contrast. So the saturation is just like the intensity of the colors. So it's not very that noticeable. If you look down at my dock, so saturation decreased is black and white, and saturation increased is really, really intense colors. So sometimes decreasing the saturation looks nice, and I just keep it at default because it, it just looks really nice at default. And the brightness, wow, that's I, I never would have guessed turns up the brightness and the contrast which changes like the, the way the blacks and the whites it's really kind of confusing but I don't think any of this needs to be tampered with unless you're going for like a movie style film look or something like that so let's check out our video action zooms in look at that and type in username all right so right here I'm about to type in a password. Let's say I really don't want to know what that password is. I don't want everyone to see. I've actually used this a few times in my videos. So this isn't as simple as it needs to be. I think they could have made this a lot simpler, but they made it sort of difficult. So I'm going to add another call out, which is going to add a call out to this video. And it saves some of the settings. See how there's a shadow on it? So let's turn that off. And we're going to click free hand. So what this allows me to do is I can draw the area where I want the callout to be. So I'm going to totally get rid of this password here. Now that highlights it. We don't want that. So we're going to turn up the blur. And what do you know? You can't, you can't even see it. So even though I'm typing in a password, you can't see it. Well, now you can. So... Let's go to here, deselect that, scroll over to when I enter the password, and we can just drag this clip over. Looks good, and we just need a few more frames there. And you can use the arrow keys to go frame by frame, or second by second. So right there, and voila take a look at our handiwork here. Now I had the call out highlighted and it doesn't really let you view the video that well so make sure you have it deselected if you're trying to watch your video. And you can even see the password even though it doesn't really matter. And so now we have one more thing so let's uh, add another video action so we want to zoom back out and we will change the scale to 100 percent and fit it to the screen and I'm going to turn off the shadow. So now it zooms right on out. So 
if you want to add a callout to just the foreground window, so let's do add callout. Foreground window means everything behind, like, if I had two windows open, it would only show the window in front. Like, the one behind it would be grayed out. And I didn't do a very good job expressing that in this little demonstration clip I made, but trust me, on it, I never use it because I don't really see the point of it. I just zoom in on it. But it's actually kind of helpful in sometimes. So this is probably you know one of the simpler but most useful things you can do in using Creamflow. Next videos we have audio properties, annotations, and text. Really, screen recording properties. It's okay, but I don't really like it that much. All right, so I just want to thank you guys for watching this second tutorial in my little Screenflow series. Next tutorial will be covering audio properties and text properties. Those are probably one of the two things I use a lot too. I don't really use audio too much, but I do use text properties quite a bit. So stay tuned for the next part of this tutorial, and I will see you guys later. Bye.